On this edition of Tech Trends, I chat with a medical doctor who is attempting to solve a unique problem that has the potential of transforming the healthcare industry, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa. Our tech tip is on tools that can help you improve your productivity. We'll kick off with some tech news and updates. Welcome to the show. I am Chukameka Agbata. When you drive or walk into a filling station, what you expect to receive is value for your money. But sometimes that is not the case, as some motorists and petrol consumers complain of overpricing and under dispensing. To this end, an automation and solution development company in Lagos has built IoT devices to track sales output from dispense pumps in petrol stations. The idea behind the machine came from what we have experienced over time in the downstream oil and gas industry. That's talking about filling stations particularly. We found out that filling stations were losing money and then also buying customers of filling stations were losing money. So we thought, okay, if we introduce technology into this particular sector, it could help both filling station owners and uh, buying customers. The device was born out of a need to fill the gap in the provision of top-notch automation and software solution, particularly in the oil and gas sector. Our solution basically is two-sided. It faces both the station owner and the customer. So for the station owner, what, the, what our solution does is it helps you track every transaction that happens in your station and gives you report on everything that happens from your dispense pumps and then can also help you report everything that happens at your tank. So it's more like a real-time inventory management system. And then for the customer part, it helps customers be able to manage their foiling data and then expenses. E-pump station automation helps improve the daily operation and management of few stations while also ensuring customers get value for their money. With the ePump app, customers get to generate vouchers. Vouchers are simply a sequence of number which they can present at the filling station to get corresponding value to, the, to what has been specified earlier on on the voucher. With the voucher, I simply walk into any of the partner filling stations and I present my voucher to the attendant. Or rather, I approach the device myself and I select the self-service option. I key in my voucher, which is a sequence of number previously generated. The device valid validates the amount on the voucher, and if there's value on the voucher, it releases the pump to sell precisely the amount on the voucher. Once that is done, at the exact amount on the voucher, for instance, 1,000 error, the pump cuts off the transaction. And the moment the nozzle is dropped, an automated receipt is printed for me, which is generated by ePOM and not written by the attendant. In addition to that, I can check my app wherever I am to know how much fuel was, fit, was bought into my car, where it was bought, and if the exact amount was dispensed or not. That thereby giving me real value for my money when I send my driver to buy fuel, or I send any third party to buy fuel in any partner filling station. Owners and managers of filling stations also get to monitor transactions irrespective of their location via the app. What this app does is wherever they are, as long as they have access to the internet, they know precisely what is going on in their filling station. They know how much fuel has been sold, they know how much fuel they have left in the tank, they know how much expense has been made, how much has been deposited to the bank and how much profit they have made or lost as the case may be from day to day. As you can see on the dashboard, it's giving me a summary. I have sold 12,140 liters of PMS. I have sold no DPK or no AGO. Now, if any transaction happens in my filling station, even if I'm not at this station, this dashboard is automatically updated, as well as I can go into my pumps to preview the transactions I'm interested in. Here are the pumps configured for this station. So these are the transactions that have happened on one of these pumps as of today. If an additional transaction happens now, it's automatically updated here where I know precisely how much was sold. E-Pump assists the fuel attendant's operation and all that is required is for the attendant's identity card to sign into the pump. Once an attendant logs in on the device with the card he has been previously provided with, he can make as many transactions in a day as he needs to until he decides to log out or is closed for the day, in which case he also logs out and he gets a report of what he has sold. 
If I pick the nozzle at any point, having logged in, the pump automatically allows me to dispense. In cases where a client is not sure of the value of fuel sold, the e-pump provides evidence of transaction without printing a receipt. What needs to be done is just to select the transactions option on the device. And a list of all the transactions that have been performed on that device that day will be displayed. Currently, 456 transactions have been done on this uh, pump, the pump today. And you can see there's an ID for every transaction. The product is saved. The rate of the rate that's the uh, price per liter, the volume of the last of this particular transaction, the amount, the payment type, it's cash, the plate number if provided, and the time of the transaction. Well, part of the challenges that we face while developing this is because is that really when you do hardware business in Nigeria, it, you you face a lot of challenges because the one the availability of raw materials or components, electric components, you have to source for some of these components from overseas. China particularly and then this perhaps is one of the biggest challenge we have and then of course funding also could be a challenge. The tech developers have also put together an automatic tank gate to replace the manual dipstick measuring to monitor product levels and detect leaks in underground storage tanks. Chinese researchers have successfully tested an air system and a ground system for intercepting drones, which is part of the country's efforts to crack down on small aircraft illegally flying at low speeds and low altitudes. A team of engineers with one of China's Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation Institutes conducted the test. The team is also part of China's military-civilian integration efforts in science and technology. Video footage of the test shows an engineer operating a black interceptor drone equipped with cameras and a net launcher with the purpose of intercepting a white quadrotor over a testing field in North China. The interceptor drone tracks the target rotorcraft and sends back images in live time to the engineer's computer screen. The engineers order the drone to shoot down the target. The target then falls to the ground, nearly intact, since it was covered by a net before crashing. In addition to the air system, the team also tested a ground system installed on a vehicle to shoot down target drones. The system can transmit interference radio signals or crash land any drone flying within 3 kilometers. If that fails, the system can launch four anti-drone nets to hit the target directly. The anti-drone launcher has a distance range of 350 meters and an altitude range of 200 meters. It can hit a target moving at a speed of less than 100 kilometers per hour. She believes the ability to launch anti-drone nets will boost the team's capacity of controlling illegal aircraft. Anti-drone methods alone can't succeed 100%. Take interference signals for example. It might be effective to control some unmanned aerial vehicles available in the market, but when it comes to illegal ones, which tend to result to frequency hopping and other irregular means, interference signals will have limited results. Like the air system, the ground system also captures the target drones by shooting nets, which will capture targets intact and release a parachute to slow them down. Unregistered drones flying near airports in densely populated Chinese cities pose potential threats to safety. The air and ground intercepting systems are expected to play a large role in eliminating such threats.
Algerians with a passion for technology had the opportunity to showcase their work at a robots competition in the capital Algiers as organizers hope to take robotics in the North African country to the next level. The competition brought 20 teams from eight Algerian states to the Babasen Youth Club. In just two minutes, each team had to move its robot along a route set by the organizers. Ages of participants in the competition ranged from 12 to 35 years. We made this robot using our own money. We bought everything with our scholarship provisions and we hope that in the future companies will sponsor us and buy us equipment so that we can improve our robot. Ayub hopes to compete in international competitions one day. Algeria, the world's third largest unconventional gas reserves, is on hold over political sensitivities a lack of infrastructure and the need for a huge injection of foreign cash and technology. Unemployment in the country stands at 12 percent, according to official figures. Algeria has been trying to attract more investment, but bureaucracy and the lack of attractive laws has held back interest. The situation has forced Algeria to rely heavily on imports to meet the needs of the nation's 40 million people as authorities seek to preserve social stability.